Welcome to the Migrating Parts to Altium's Managed Components video. My name is Randy Clements. I'll be your host for this video. I'm going to be demonstrating how you can use uh, parts and a database library to um, create a nice clean set of managed components in Altium. First, before we migrate the library, let's just take a moment to look at it. We have a simple library right here with 22 parts in it. You can download a, a, a version of this library if you like. You can go over to pcbpartsblogspot.com, select the download button, click on this first arrow and download it and extract the files. Um, there's a couple notes here that you should pay attention to if you want to try it. That's you need to know what version of Office you're using, whether it's 64-bit or 32-bit, and you need to set some permissions and securities um, so the parts front end will run if you'd like to test the parts front end. Okay, so let's look at how simple it would be to migrate these parts. Um, again, before we get started, though, I want to emphasize that. Um, whether you're migrating parts from one of your existing schematics or your existing libraries, migrating parts to uh, Altium's 365 managed components is truly uh, a garbage in, garbage out kind of problem. Meaning that you can't start out by migrating a bunch of inconsistent, poorly defined libraries into Altium 365 and expect the results to be any better when you're done. For example, if you were to download from Altium content this Panasonic part number here from their content vault, you would end up with this symbol and you would end up with this footprint. And if you were to download this part number from Altium's content, you would get this symbol and yet a different footprint, actually up to four footprints or three. And they wouldn't, the two footprints wouldn't be similar, they're different. The symbols are not similar, they're different. Um, so the point is, is if you're not already consistent with your symbols, um, you can't expect to have a better situation um, when you're done migrating to the library. But anyway, let's let's continue on and look at how simple it would be to migrate. Um, and so one of the things before I go a little bit further is if we look at these descriptions here and look at the values, we'll notice that um, out of the database library, we had a very consistent format for description. Like here's ceramic caps, the value of the cap you know, the tolerance, the working voltage, dielectric constant, and the package, etc. And um, just one more demonstration before we leave the database library and, uh, and migrate the same library to Altium just so we can have a before and after comparison. Notice that while we're in the database library, some of the features that we have, we can see the footprint, we can see the symbol, um, we can see whether or not we have stock, um, and of course we can select our data sheet or we can jump into the supplier details. Okay. So we already know um, at the time that we're placing the parts whether or not there's inventory available. Okay, so anyway uh, again, like even with the resistors, we see a very um, consistent formatting. And notice that there's no commas in here. Um, that's a clue that I took years ago from uh, DigiKey and Mauser. Um, they don't use any commas in their descriptions. And one of the reasons for not putting commas in there is at some point, if you ever need to export data out, some people sometimes will try to export data out and use what's called comma separated values. Well, having commas in your data can really uh, destroy your data set and uh, your skew the columns and the data will be very uh, confusing uh, after it's been exported. So it's not a good practice to put commas in. And uh, you might uh, consider that's why Mauser, uh, DigiKey, and most other uh, websites that uh, have databases with some experience don't use commas. 
Okay, so anyway, let's get back onto the original topic, and that's exporting, which is so simple. All we need to do is go under our operations after we've installed and loaded our database library. And we'd go down to migrate the library. Altium will do an analyzing the library. And the nice thing is that Altium defaults will work just fine, usually for these imports. I mean, there's some advanced settings here that you can get into. Um, but I've found that at least um, with the parts database uh, format, it's not really necessary. So anyway, we could at this point validate the library and we could um, look at the message panels to see if there's any issues. So we've got one identified issue. It says component 3000 um, doesn't recognize a, a part type of new. So we could change that if we want, make it new. And if we hit validate again, so I had a cre created a category for new parts. We'll go ahead and migrate those parts. And just take a couple more moments. Bear with me. We're almost done. We're only about 30 seconds into it. I know it seems like a long time when you're asked to wait and look at a screen. But we're just about done. 37 seconds into it. And this is just a small data set again. It's only 22 parts or so. You should be able to do it in under a minute. There we go. So we've successfully migrated our 23 parts. And if we wanted, we could open the log and, and look at the, the logged results. Um, usually it's not necessary. You can tell pretty quickly right away if you've got a problem just by looking at your library. All right, so at this point, I'll close the library migrator. We'll go back to our components panel. And I'm going to open the all category at first and we'll see we have the same 22 parts that we had when we were in the database library so looking at those again there's our 22 parts and in our all library there's our 22 parts and we pretty much see the same information that we saw before we see the some parametric data we see the symbol we see the footprint um, if we there's no references for a new part. That's because it was a new part. But here again, we have our references to our data sheet, our supplier details. Um, we have our footprints here. They're under revision control now. I think it's pretty questionable whether or not you need revision control on uh, your library. I, I agree that you need revision control on um, your schematics and any products that you've released into the market. Um, but Anyway, that's a here and or there. Anyway, you will still have you can still have version controlled libraries without having uh, revision controlled if you like, even using a database. So we can see that we've got a very similar situation here. We can look at our capacitors, and I'm going to add another field. Select a column. I'm going to add a value field. So you can see here we've got our values. And you know, one thing interesting um, that I was a little bit surprised that Altium does a better job of sorting the database library values than they do their own managed components. For example, in a database library, um, we can organize that by taking, say, for example, our right click on this headings here, enable grouping, and I'll put the package case and I'll put the part type up there part type first now we've organized our data and we can uh, for example look at these resistors uh, I can because I chose also to chose the package case I can drill down to the 0402s and if we fil uh, filter by value we can see they're nicely sorted in order and the same thing for the capacitors if we 
look at those they're nicely sorted in order that's the correct order and one more time we'll look at the inductors we can see they're sorted but uh, for whatever reason not sure why um, Ultium didn't do quite as good a job um, supporting their managed components in sorting that we'll take another look here and also notice here that I have to go around and set the value field for every one of these categories where in the database library I I really only had to add the value field one time and then organize the parts but you'll you'll need to add the value field uh, for every one of these categories because you know it's just the way it operates in this new managed components so anyway back to our capacitors for example we have the value and if we try to sort, we'll see that 5.6 puff, we all know that's much smaller than 5600 puff. It just doesn't sort in order. And we'll look at the resistors. Same thing here, 0, 100K, just doesn't sort. Seems a bit unfortunate. I would have expected a little bit better results on the managed components. But anyway, we can see that it's very easy. Um, but again, I would emphasize the the quality of the data that will end up in your managed components is only as good as the data that starts. And that's where a tool like um, the parts front end, um, which is also uh, can be found in the download. And uh, you can download that and play with it. You can even use it to migrate your parts up to Altium. But uh, the key feature about this tool is it takes care of what would be a template in Altium that you don't really need a template um, because it consistently creates all the parts. So for example, I'll just pick this 1K ohm resistor. We could filter for all our resistors. But if we were to pick, if we knew we were designing another 0402 resistor, we could just simply choose an existing resistor. And um, so this 10K part here, Let's try something here. This is a 2K part. Let's see what happens here. We'll go over to Octo part. We'll just try to change that to 2K and see what we get. All right, so we got us a 2K part here, and we've got no stock over at DigiKey. And we've got... A few other distributors, but um, because we want to get the uh, what we're really after at this point is the consistent description of the part. So we'll just go ahead and down uh, pull that in from DigiKey. We just drag and drop this URL right here into this black hat. And first, we'll want to make like we'll reuse the same footprint and symbol. We can drag and drop that URL link. Try to refresh that, drag and drop that, and then we can save that. Okay, so at this point we've created another 2K ohm resistor, and we can see in, in Altium in the database library, under the resistors, there was another 0402, and if we were to refresh the library, there we'll go. We can see we've got our 2K resistor right there. It's ready to be placed. And again, it, not surprisingly, it's very consistent. Same size as all the other resistors that are in the design. Okay. And another nice feature about a database library compared to um, Altium, although Altium's managed components, you can do something very similar, but I find it's a little bit easier in the, from the database is that we know what this 1K ohm part here is got a design ID of 30,015. We just change our design ID. We've got ourselves another 1K ohm resistor. And that could be pretty handy when you've got 20 pages of schematics or more and you, you need to go in and change the part number uh, across all the parts or the value or the capacitor or something that's anyway. And because all the parts were consistently sized, 
you know, for example, in here we could make this 3015. We don't have to even concern ourselves with re rewiring the schematic. Our job's done. Anyway, um, thanks for taking a look. As you can see, it's very simple to migrate um, to uh, Altium's cloud using a, a database library. Again, the key to having um, a nice library in Altium um, starts with having consistent, clean data. Okay. And also, you could always add new parts to um, the database and do another migration and continue to build parts that are consistent, clean, using the same footprints and symbols. Anyway, if you'd like to take a look at the tool, you can head over to pcbparts.blogspot.com, hit the download button, download yourself a, a free evaluation version that you can play with, and uh, you can use that evaluation version to uh, migrate several components up to your Altium 365 Cloud Managed Components. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you have a great day.